Okay, what is up there, YouTube? This is J-Man Time. I have a video on Italian aircraft carriers of the First and Second World War. Now, during the First and Second World War, the Italian Navy actually experimented with a variety of different aircraft carrier and seaplane carrier designs. So let's go over some of the rare aircraft carrier and seaplane carrier designs used by the Italian Regia Marina or the Italian Navy of the First and Second World War. Now, the first aircraft carrier or seaplane carrier on the list is the Italian seaplane carrier Europa from 1915. Now, the Europa was an auxiliary seaplane carrier that was originally laid down in 1895 as the Italian merchant vessel Manila. But later on, in February 1915, during the second year of World War I, she was purchased by the Italian Regia Marina, or the Italian Navy, and selected for conversion into a seaplane carrier or an auxiliary seaplane carrier. Europa's displacement was 6,400 tons tons or 7,100 tons. Her main armament was three 3-inch three 76 millimeter anti-aircraft guns. She also carried two hangars and could carry upwards to eight seaplanes. Her speed was 12.2 knots or 22.6 kilometers per hour or 14 miles per hour. And she had a crew of 250. This includes the 16 pilots that were to that were to man the seaplanes within Europa's two aircraft hangars. Now, Europa actually carried a variety of different aircraft models throughout the war. The first seaplanes carried on board Europa were the Machi L1 class of seaplanes, and these were actually reverse engineered aircraft that were originally from the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and they were based on the Austrian Lahner Model L, which was an Austro-Hungarian reconnaissance floatplane that was designed several years before World War I. She also carried the Machi L2, Machi L3, and Machi L5 series of seaplanes, and she also carried rarer seaplanes like the FBA class of seaplanes and the Alsado SVAL type seaplane fighter aircraft. Now, during World War I, the Europa actually was used to a great extent, a greater extent than most German seaplanes during the war. For example, in 1915, she actually replaced the Italian protected cruiser Elba. The Elba was a partial protected cruiser. She was a protected cruiser that was converted into a seaplane carrier herself or a seaplane carrying warship herself. And she actually replaced the Elba and her flotilla. Later on, in in 1917, the Europa actually took part in the Battle of the Strait of Toronto when three of her seaplanes were used to attack the Austro-Hungarian Navy. During this battle, one of her seaplanes actually attacked the Austro-Hungarian cruiser Hegelin. The Battle of the Strait was one of the largest naval battles that occurred between the Austro-Hungarian Navy and the Italian Regia Marina during the years 1915 through 1917. Later on, she also used her seaplanes to launch air raids on the Austrian-held territory of Durazzo in July 1917. Later on, in November 1918, Austro-Hungary surrendered. The Europa actually took part in the occupation of the Austrian cities of Sebenko and the other ports of Dalmatia. Later on, after World War I, in 1919, she returned to Toronto, Italy, and during the post-war period, she pretty much fell into disuse. Later on, in 1920, she was finally decommissioned by the Italian Navy and sold for scrap, thus ending the history of the first Italian of seaplane carrier to be used and one of the rare Italian warships to be used during the First World War, the Italian seaplane carrier Europa. The next seaplane carrier on the list is the Giuseppe Maraglia from 1921. Giuseppe Maraglia was an Italian seaplane carrier constructed between 1921 and 1927. She had a displacement of 5,913 tons. Her main armament was four 102 millimeter 35 caliber main guns, and she had 12 13.2 millimeter Brita Model 1931 heavy anti-aircraft machine guns. 
Her armor thickness was 70 to 80 millimeters. She was also fitted with two aviation catapults that allowed her to carry upwards to 17 seaplanes. The ship had a speed of 21 knots or 39 kilometers per hour and she had a crew of 296 sailors. The Giuseppe Medaglia was constructed originally as a train ferry under the name Cita di Messina by the Italian State Railroad Company, but in 1923 her hull was acquired by the Italian Regia Marina and she was later converted into a seaplane carrier and being launched in November 1927. The Giuseppe Morelia actually participated in the Second italo abyssinian War in which she used her 17 seaplanes as reconnaissance aircraft for the Italian army as they launched their invasion of Ethiopia. That war eventually ended in 1936. Between 1936 and 1939, the Giuseppe Moradia again would be involved this time in the Spanish Civil War assisting the forces of Francisco Franco, using her aircraft as reconnaissance aircraft for the, the combined Spanish and German and Italian mercenaries fighting against the Republic of Spain during the Spanish Civil War. Eventually, the Spanish Civil War came to an end in 1939. Later on in 1939, World War II would break out and the Giuseppe Moralia was actually attacked or came under attack during the Battle of Antaranto. Now, the Battle of Antaranto was a British led attack that happened on the 11th and 12th of November 1940. This was an air raid launched the Italian naval base of Toronto, and the Giuseppe Moralia was actually one of the intended targets for the British air raid. But luckily, she, ma she managed to survive the surprise attack on Toronto and would later serve in the Mediterranean theater during the Second World War. During the later half of the Second World War, in mid-1943, Italy would later be divided into two regions. Um, the southern half of Italy was annexed by the Allies and later switched sides, and the northern half of Italy remained under Mussolini's control until the end of the war. And during this time period, the Giuseppe Moralia actually defected to the Allied side. Later on, on the 2nd of December 1943, and she was later pressed into service with the Royal Navy, but she was later repaired. She spent most of the remainder of World War II out of service. After World War II, the Giuseppe Morelia was given back to Italy and used as a prisoner of warship. She was later used to transport said prisoners back to Italy. She's pretty much spent the rest of her career as a barrack ship in the port of Toronto until she was eventually sold for scrap in the year 1950, thus ending the history of the Giuseppe Morelia, which was the first Italian seaplane carrier designed after World War I. During the Second World War, the Italians wanted to construct their own fleet of fleet-sized aircraft carriers that would mirror the British Royal Navy's aircraft carriers, for example, HMS and other fleet-sized aircraft carriers used by the Royal Navy. So in 1941, the Italian Navy began acquiring hulks that could be easily converted into fleet-sized aircraft carriers. And the first aircraft carrier project was the Aquila. The Aquila was a fleet-sized aircraft carrier that was constructed between 1941 and 1943. It was actually converted from a transatlantic passenger vessel under the name SS Roma. The SS Roma was a passenger vessel that was constructed between 1938 and 1940, but she was requisitioned by the Italian Navy to be converted into an aircraft carrier, and that carrier would be named Aquila, which means eagle in Italian. Aquila had a displacement of 27,800 tons. Her main armament was eight 135 millimeter, 5.3 inch, 45 caliber model 1937 main guns. Her secondary armament was 12 65 millimeter, 2.56 inch, 64 caliber secondary guns. And she had 132 20 millimeter Breda model 35 65 caliber anti aircraft guns. She carried upwards to 51 military grade aircraft. 
and she had a speed of 30 knots or 56 kilometers per hour or 35 miles per hour. Her maximum range was 5,500 nautical miles and she had a crew of 1,420. Now the Aquila actually had a long construction history. Her construction or conversion began in 1941, but she wasn't even completed by 1943 when Italy was split in half by the Allied invasion of Sicily in 1943. During this time period of 1941 through 1943, construction on the Aquila was halted multiple times because of instances during the war and bombing of Italian manufacturing plants. By 1943, by September 1943, the Aquila was almost completed and was in the process of this, was in the testing stage of her development. When on the 8th of September 1943, Italy surrendered to the Allies, but the Italian Northern government remained with the Axis powers. But the port of Genoa, where the Aquila was based, was still under German control, so Germany actually confiscated the Aquila in order to be used as an aircraft carrier for the German Navy. But unfortunately, this never happened. On the 16th of June 1944, during the following year, the Aquila was actually damaged by an Allied air raid, and she was later scuttled as a block ship at the entrance of Genoa Harbor by the German army on April the 19th, 1945. Later, after World War II in 1946, the Aquila was raised and towed to La Spiza, Italy, where she was eventually scrapped between 1949 and 1952, thus ending the history of the first Italian aircraft carrier to be designed during the Second World War. And the final aircraft carrier designed by the Italian Regia Marina during the Second World War was the Italian aircraft carrier Spavero, which was constructed between 1941 and 1942. Now, the Spavero was originally an Italian ocean liner by the name MS Augustus, but in 1941, in 1941, 1942, she was requisitioned by the Regia Marita, just like the Aquila, and converted and selected for conversion into a fleet-sized aircraft carrier. Her displacement was 30,418 tons. Her main armament was eight 135 uh, millimeter 40 caliber model 1937 main guns. She was also fitted with 12 65.60 65 millimeter slash 64 caliber secondary guns. She was also fitted with 22 20 millimeter Scotty model 2065 anti-aircraft auto cannons. Her armor thickness was between 70 and 80 millimeters and she had a speed of 20 knots or 37 kilometers per hour or 23 miles per hour and she had a crew of 1,420 and she could also carry between 50 and 52 aircraft in her hangars. These aircraft consisted of 34 fighter aircraft and nine torpedo bombers, giving her a combined total of 43 aircraft. Now, conversion work of the MS Augustus began in September 1942, and by 1943, September 1943, she was only about 60 to 70 percent complete. She was nowhere near as complete as the Aquila. So by the 8th of September 1943, when southern Italy defected to the Allied side, she was later confiscated by the Germans, just like the Aquila, as the northern half of Italy did not have enough naval facilities to handle any of the larger warships that includes the aircraft carriers that were under construction. But unfortunately, later on, on the 5th of October 1944, the Germans later scuttled her as a block ship at the entrance of the port of Genoa. That pretty much ends her history during the Second World War. After World War II in 1951, the wreck of the Spavario was raised and sold for scrap, thus ending the history of the second aircraft carrier to be designed by the Italian Regina Maria during the Second World War. And that's basically it for Italian aircraft carriers of World War I and II. 
Now these aircraft carriers and seaplane carriers are rare and are rarely ever mentioned, but I thought it was a good idea to make a video on them. So what do you all think of these aircraft carriers? Which aircraft carrier slash seaplane carrier interests you the most? If I had to choose, I would say the Europa and the Aquila as my favorite aircraft carriers on this list or seaplane carriers on this list. But what are your opinions on these vessels? Please tell me in the comment section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time signing off. Thank you.